Swarovski i Bloomsbury for the annual holiday, fair weekend. The boys are excited, been excited all week to go on the Rossi boat. So when you've got a car, you need to be here about half an hour, 45 minutes before to make sure you get a space. <clears throat> and then you need to hang about until they shout you to go on the boat. And uh, it looks off at off a choppy today. <laughs> we are not looking forward to this at all. And in the COVID days, you had to... Ah, oh, the birdies are kissing. Um, and then the COVID days, when you uh, went on the ferry in your car, you had to sit in the car. You couldn't go up the stairs at all. So it was horrible. Um, so you would either be sitting in direct sunlight. So if the sun came into your car, you were snookered, you were getting roasted alive or you were sitting near one of the potholes or a space and you could actually see how choppy it was. Because um, I was looking at the lovely seas and looking at them and looking at you. Um, but we can now go up the stairs, so which is good. So we'll just park the car on the ferry and go up the stairs. So for five of us and two toddlers, so that was four adults, a child, as in Neve, up to 15, although she was 16. But money and all that. Um, you need toddler tickets as well, just obviously so don't know how many people are on the boat. Plus two cars it was 80 pounds 90 pence and that's returns uh, five past ten ferry and it takes about 40 minutes so then to get over there um, so yep yeah, just thinking about here in love the Weems Bay station they've got some beautiful flowers and that'll be us, just heading over soon. A lot to do if you've got a car, but there's also an open tour bus, like the red buses that you see in like Glasgow and Edinburgh and things like that, and it takes you all round the island. So one of the most famous scenes on the tour bus is all roads lead back to Butte, and they do. Um, so no matter where you go on the island, all roads lead back to Butte, and. Butte is made up of a lot of different bays. So there's Scalpsy Bay, there's St Ninian's Bay. That's the only two I can actually think of off the top of my head. Um, but our favourite bay is um, Ettrick Bay. And this is Ettrick Bay. And a bus comes here regularly. And you go past um, Port Bannantyne, um, which has got a small park in it and it's got a post office, it's got a pub, it's got 
a park. It had, it used to have the base tablet on the island in the little shop. It's got a yacht berth um, where yachts get repaired and things like that. And this is Etic Bay. Up there's a small cafe. It does beautiful homemade cake, um, toasties, things like that. And just over there, there is a swing pack. But behind there, there is also glamping pods. I'll show you them in a little bit. They're fairly new um, to the bay. Um, uh, I think they're only maybe three years maybe three, four years old, maybe not even that. Um, they're great for obviously just staying a, a couple of nights or whatever. But here they also, in Etchick Bay, have a festival, um, which is fairly new as well. And they have um, bands and things like that, a couple of day festival. And uh, it's obviously really, really, uh, popular and things like that. Um, they've had big names over here doing it as well from what I can remember because at one point I said to Craig, surely that can't be right. Um, but it was um, and it's brilliant and as you can see there's some like caravans and you can camp here and things like that as well. It's been, um, it's great today um the, it's not windy at all the sun's not out which is even better but this bay reminds me of when we were we and we used to come with the play scheme um, my mum and her best mate used to run the play scheme and we would come here maybe on a friday so on a friday we used to go between aaron and rossi uh, used to get the ferry over after play scheme was finished and then we would get one of the last ferries home on a Friday um, and we would just come to Etchick Bay and make the most of it when it was scorching every single day in the summer um, but Etchick Bay used to be absolutely heaving from what I used to remember and it, it's, it's busy today believe it or not um, although it's still fairly quiet. There is an old post box, uh, an old telephone box up there, um, and it's always been there. Um, the buses are fairly regular here in the sense that they're maybe every hour or whatever. Uh, they run seven days a week, so they still come on a Sunday, but that's they're quite infrequent. This is the first time the boys have actually been in the water here. They usually don't like the beach, so it's a nice memory for us <laughs> to have them actually paddling in the water. Archie's still got his wee wet shoes on, but um, R Robert um, has said no, he wanted his shoes off, so which is good. Um, so they just love throwing stones in the water. So this is this is our favourite bay on the island. Scalpsy Bay is well known for the seals um, and all the years I've been coming here I've seen about two seals I think. Um, everybody else, uh, Craig um, and Neve see seals all the time. So do my mum and dad but I've never been fortunate enough to see the seals um, but it's seals galore here um, so maybe catch a couple when we're heading around to Mount Stuart House hopefully at some point there's a wedding on today um, in Mount Stuart House so we wouldn't be able to do the tour but we've done the tour before and the tour is amazing Stella McCartney got married in Ireland a few years ago and that was strewn with celebrities on the island um, who stayed in all the B&Bs and things like that um, which was obviously great for the island. Um, we did price it when we got married in the island three years ago, um, but that was just not in our price range. Um, but then we thought, why are we doing that um, when we should just get married in um, our favourite hotel on the island? So that's what we did. And unfortunately... Um, the Bayview has now sold and Irene and Andrew told us when we got here this time so we're very sad that this is our last year with the Bayview. 
so we'll show you that later on as well but for now this is Ettrick Bay so this is the glamping pods at Ettrick Bay so there's five of them so if I can find the link I'll stick it up either in the video or in the description and right next to that's the park it's a wee sitting area there so they've just done this park up actually it's just to have a massive slide like massive it was about seven foot um one of these skinny slides that you used to go down um but they've replaced it with one of the the small bee slides um and it's got it doesn't have any infant swings in it it's just the big swings it's got a wee caterpillar it looks like it's all little tykes and small bee now um obviously some tires the boys are obviously playing on a makeshift pirate ship thing and there's a wee car thing over at the side so it's just a very little park but it's safe enough one gate which doesn't look very safe but <laughs> some chalkboards doesn't look as if there's any chalk but um looks fair enough and there's a lot of benches a lot of memorial benches here so there's maybe one two three four five six benches that all look out onto the the bay so this is beatty court this is now apartments or flats this used to be the indoor swimming um, my dad said that he has been in here when he was wee and it used to be seawater, dad, did you say? It used to be seawater that was in it um, a long time ago but it's been apartments for god as long as I've been coming here so um, but that's a lovely building um, it's round to the left of the ferry when you come off it so it's just on the left hand side when you come off the ferry so we're just walking into town today uh, this morning it's been raining here um although it's meant to be a heat wave so it has been raining and that's my mum videoing <laughs> it's no neve it's no neve videoing it's uh, shona videoing um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's Craig videoing, <laughs> good known, but he has actually been videoing. Um, so he's been doing quite a bit of videoing. Um, <laughs> um, the ferries are few and far between on a Sunday, from what I can remember. Um, or used to be, maybe not as often, maybe not as. Maybe not as much now, um, but <laughs> they have been out already. Maybe they don't start this early on a Sunday. Um, over there is the pavilion. Maybe go around there later, but um, the pavilion is the community hub of the island, or at least used to be until it closed for renovation just before COVID and Scottish Government uh, gave money towards it as well as other funders and just before Covid the contractors went bust from what I remember and then Covid hit so they did find um, another contractor to take it over but it was delayed in getting refurbished so what happened was they started again and it is underway to get redone but it's still not open unfortunately but 
they will hopefully be opening soon. What they did keep was the bright red pavilion sign. So they actually managed to keep the colour of the red and it was a bespoke colour to the island. Um, I can't remember what the colour was, but it was named an actual colour and they kept it. Um, it's covered covered in blue plastic just now, um, just to preserve the work that's been done actually on the sandstone just now. But what happens is at night time, um, it lights up and basically it lights up the whole bay. So like any boats or that coming in, they'll see the bright red pavilion sign and basically that's how you know and basically you are coming into Rossi, B Rossi Bay. Um, there is lights all around the harbour as well. Um, it's like, the only word to describe it, it it's like fairy lights um, and it does light up the bay and that's what I remember when I was a child um, and it was, it was lovely. Um, so that basically brings you round to the harbour there so when the boat comes in it takes when you come off the boat it takes you to the very first um iconic place on the island and that is the victorian toilets um and i will take you in there and let you have a look because um you do make a donation to go into it so that they can obviously keep them restored to their natural um, beauty and maintenance um, because they are, they are particularly stunning um, but yeah um, it's Sunday um, it's very quiet on the island on a Sunday uh, a lot of people go home on a Sunday we always come for a long weekend so it's relatively quiet. We hope to have a wee game of putting in that today. There's two courses to do. There's a red course and a yellow course. Um, not one's particularly harder than the other. Um, yellow's harder. Oh, Neve's saying yellow's harder. Um, my oh. mum's a bit of a master at the old putting, so she likes a wee game of putting. Um, um, and my uncles are on the island as well, so I think they're up for a bit of a challenge. So we'll um, we'll see if they make it for a game of putting today as well. So um, yeah, we're nearly in the town centre, and we'll show you what else is going on in Rossi Bay. So that's one of the ferries coming in. So the ferries to come over to Rossi leave from Weems Bay and they are five past the hour and leaving from Rossi they are also five past the hour so it takes about 40 minutes to come over so they've got two boats on the go and they are aptly named Argyle and Butte. So they come over and they obviously dock there. And just now the ramp that you currently go down as a passenger is currently broken at the moment. So if you are a passenger coming off the boat, you need to wait until all the cars are currently off the ferry and then you um, come off where the cars basically come off um, which is a bit of a nuisance but um, it's not Calmark's responsibility it's the council's responsibility so they are in a bit of a tough war um, to get it fixed uh, it's been going on for quite a wee while so hopefully they'll get it fixed soon um, especially coming into peak season And that's Craig shouting at the ferries if they can hear him, obviously. Um, it is advised that if you want to go on the ferry, you arrive about an hour before, just because it can get um, so quite busy. 
can get quite busy um, on the it can get busy in the middle of the summer um, so just a word of warning because if you miss that ferry you are then waiting another hour and if you are in Weems Bay there is not much to do in Weems Bay if you are waiting an hour your music. Well, there is that. So, on the way, there is the kettle drum, which is a nice eatery. And if anyone remembers Glenn's, Hutchinson's, Robertson's, and Stepic, they still have a Glenn's here. Um, and on the island, they have a Helmus Bakery. So, it is run by a Syrian family and it's been on the island for about four years now I think and it is very very successful so successful that they have one in Glasgow in Bears Den um, which has been there I think for two years now which is also very successful I have yet to have a cake out of there um, and I don't know why because I am a cake fanatic um, but um, I will get one eventually and I've still not had one in Bear's Den either um, and I don't know why um, I, I, for the life of me I don't know why I always end up in Lily's um, she's my go-to woman um, in Partick but um, I should really get my bahookie in gear the waterfront is also a lovely eatery um, Callum's Cabin, that was the other shop I wanted to show you. So Callum's Cabin is a charity um, that is very close to mine and Craig's heart. Ticking over podcast had Caroline from Callum's Cabin on their podcast. If you haven't already listened to it, please, please go and listen to it. It's about Callum's cabin that they opened a while ago for families who need some respite but also to make amazing memories for children and I'll leave that there because I'll do something else about that um, another time um, the palace bar is one of the most famous bars on the island for when the Waverley comes in because people basically come off the Waverley and they head straight to the palace bar and this is the karaoke bar they basically come off and go straight in there. It was owned by, I want to say John and Carol, um, and I think it was sold, um, but it still does karaoke, and that's where everybody ends up. Next to that is Zavaroni's um, of the Zavaroni family. Um, this is one of their chippies on the island. Um, Yes, I mean, Zavaronis are the Zavaronis. Um, Busby's used to be a co-op, um, and that's been now there for a wee while. There is the Chinese, that's one of the Chinese on the island, which is called the Sea Dragon. The Golfer's Bar is just there. The Golfer's Bar is a family-friendly pub. It's got live entertainment. It's um, children friendly it's got live sports um, uh, assuming it will be absolutely heaving today because the open has started or is starting today so I'm pretty sure that will be a firm favourite today that building has now been derelict for a wee while uh, I'm not sure if it's listed and that's why they can't actually do anything with it um, which is a shame because it's been there for quite a wee while now. Um, I did notice this sign the other day actually and it says council help stop Rossi Crumberland um, which is basically says it all. Um, there's a couple of gift shops there and the Black Bull serves food. This is a taxi stand. 
Zavaroni's. So that's a wee gift shop there. Um, with the post office in Zavaroni's, that's the ice cream shop and cafe. Best cafe, and he says. Um, number one, so that's the post office. Also, a little gift shop. I've now lost my family because I'm over filming. The They're over the bridge watching the boats. So, uh huh. Um, so, this is Guildford Square. So, Guildford Square is the community hub of Rossi. Um, so in Guildford Square this is where all the community action happens so this is where they have like their fets, their gala days, any fundraisers that they do, any charity events that they do, uh, any memorials that they do, anything like that this is where they all sort of congregate. Um, this is also where the main bus stands is so they have Rossi tour bus like uh, I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos so they have the big red open top bus which leaves from here and it takes you all around the island it's a hop on ho hop off bus um, so you can hop on hop off basically um, it leaves from here and all buses sort of leave from here so any bus that goes to Ettrick Bay or Mount Stewart so the other bus stop is basically across the road um, on the square there is the co-op which was directly just at the opposite side of the square and across the road there just behind there is an amusement so there's one amusement on the island and they have just changed it to a ticket um, amusement so um, basically you save your tickets up and you can exchange them for small gifts and things like that so it's a lot better than it used to be in the sense that it was just your normal amusements and your pickup machines and things like that. But at least this way the kids can get obviously small gifts and things like that. Next to that is the Esplanade Hotel, uh, which is one of the other bigger hotels on the island. Um, it's also a restaurant. We used to eat in the Esplanade all the time. Um, it's sort of changed and over the years it's still pretty decent. Um, and just through Guildford Square is Rossi Castle. So Rossi Castle has been there obviously forever. It has scaffolding up at the moment and it has had scaffolding up for quite a number of years. It is um, sort of crumbling. <laughs> um, but it's one place we've never actually been in and we had looked at it for our wedding a few years back. It's worth a visit, um, as far as we know. It's just something we've never done because Neve was at that age where she wasn't really interested and we've never really been on the island without her. Um, that we would sort of like pay the money to go in and have a look um, kind of thing. Um, but it is apparently pretty good um, so it is one thing to do with the kids if that kind of thing obviously it's an activity to do on the island if that's one of the things you wanted to do so they have got a marina on the island um, for those who have boats um, my boys are obsessed with boats and we did know that um, but I mean, it's just heightened since we came onto the island. So obviously there is a marina. Some of the boats that we've seen over the years in here are pretty spectacular. I mean, I mean, just spectacular. Um, this obviously just is some of them that are docked here just now if that's the word i'm not really too sure if that's the word you can see the people coming off the ferry and like i said they're actually coming up off of where the cars actually came off if you know what i mean so this is the actual ferry terminal bright orange roof you can't really miss it um, and they do have a small lifting bridge and this was up yesterday um, because 
I don't know if it's actually in the harbour. There is a... Whew, I don't know if I can see it. I'm just trying to show you. There's a, a boat and it's called... It's not here. It's called Commando One. And it seats about, I would say, 12 people. And... It looks like a speedboat, that's the only word I can really use to describe it. And mum and dad seen it, I think it was Friday, and uh, it was going basically at some speed. And it looked like it was going up the Kyles. Um, it's something I would, I would love to do. Um, and it's something we've never done is sort of go up the Kyles. The Waverley, when it comes to Rossi, docks and people can get off at Rossi and then some people stay on the boat and it actually goes up the Kyles and you can see a lot more of what's going on up the Kyles. <laughs> um, and the Kyles are just up there. So up there, is still Rossi um, and that takes you around to Port Bannantyne and round to Ettrick Bay and things like that but the Kyles are way up there and there's fishing boats up there and things like that but over there is the Victorian toilets so this is the Victorian toilets isn't it? No, that's the man's toilets, isn't it? So this is the Victorian toilets. Mum, show the people. Show the people. So it's got showers in it. So maybe if the people are coming off the boat. It's lovely, isn't it? They're not dirty at all. And it's got a massive baby change in place. Baby change. Baby change. So there's a twin mum. It's got a folding door. So it's big enough for a double pram. Which is amazing. No. Isn't it? Three massive cubicles. Three massive cubicles <laughs> and then that's the guys toilets through there now my husband has taken a video of the toilets through there um, and there's usually now this bit is usually open and that's where you obviously leave your little tip and things like that but it's a historic Scotland um, building um 1994 i thought it was here longer than that um but yeah it's um the architectural heritage fund um and obviously a lot of different um people that made this happen so yeah it's just a very lovely building <laughs> so this is the main street in Rossi. It's a very small main street, but it's so cute. And this is fairly I'd say fairly recent, it's not fairly recent, it's just, it's been... This is new, this is a uh, lovely gazebo, but this is the amphitheatre. And every weekend, every afternoon, they have a singer or some sort of entertainment. So yesterday it was Amber Breeze or Anna Breeze. She was singing between two and four and today 
is Eugene. Can't remember the second name. Um, he is singing between two and four today in the amphitheatre. So it actually gives you some history. And that is an advert for Butte Fest, which is the 29th to the 31st of July. So I'll put a wee post up. Now this is Castle Street, aptly named because the castle sits on it. And there's my mother, she's just getting some coffees there. But this street takes you up to the leisure centre, which we'll be going to later. It's been refurbished. Um, and we always go on a Sunday because we are um, going to the fun session of the swimming. Um, so that blue building there is called Harry Hawes and that is our diner of choice when we are on the island for dinners. Um, they do a lot of they do chicken, um, which they called chicky bites, um, which is lovely. But they do your traditional fish and chips and things like that. Um, so it's actually really, really lovely. So the pavilion, which I mentioned earlier, when they did an opening, they used this space um, to feature local artists. And they've been doing so ever since. So on rotation, they feature local artists and the Castle Gallery um, is a lovely little gallery and it does um, local jewellers as well, handmade jewellers. Music art is a vegan and vegetarian little shop, um, cafe shop that's just been refurbished just now day to day you've got pharmacist there's lloyd's pharmacy on the main street and you've also got one on the adjacent street fraser gillies and miller's are two mains well this is a main shop the fraser gillies shop and miller's is the female and baby shop one shop now on the main street, which is the Bank of Scotland. This shop here used to be TSB. Butte Tools and General Store has been here forever. And this is your, think like, your, if you ever needed something like your DIY handy, Oh my god, I've ran out of that and I really need it kind of thing. Um, that is that shop. You've got your bookies. And this shop just coming up is my most favourite shop on this street. It's called The Dressing Room and it is the boutique shop on the island. And every year I go into that shop and I buy something. Whether it be a dress, whether it be jewellery, whether it be a hat, whether it be whatever. They do have an online shop. And this shop as well, Simply Beautiful. It is, I'll just show you in the window. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy local. That's kind of the same thing. So Simply Beautiful is like you are trying to think. So it's like your unique home 
decor um, but they do like lots of lovely candles lots of lovely like home gifts and things like that and I think this is also now part of it as well this is fairly new um, lots of bigger pieces and things like that they've also got this shop on the island it's called the Spirit of Butte and it oh, I mean it looks amazing but obviously because we don't drink anymore um, we just try and stay away from it as much as possible um, but it's got your bespoke basically uh, spirits so for example I don't know if you can see this just because of the reflection but they've got like passion fruit gin they've got butte bramble gin they've got peach chocolate orange parma violets chocolate toffee rhubarb and ginger oh I mean gin was my drink so like that just sounds amazing to me um herbal gin I mean honest to god so yeah that used to be a butcher's and it dealt in, it was legally allowed to deal in game and things like that a super drug they don't have a boots on the island so they have a super drug and they've got a bargain buys we don't have a bargain buys in glasgow and um, but bargain buys is like your home bargains or your b&m Zara Bell, which is a baby store. Wanda's Cancer Research. Just menswear, I would say, is like... Um, so it sells Fred Perry, like, ball bag boxers and things like that. It's got a computer shop. Um, which has come in handy for us if we've like, less chargers and that on the mainland Flowers by Janine she is I would say the most well known florist on the island if there is any other florists on the island I'm not too sure where they are um, she from what I know um, does the majority of the flowers for Mount Stewart um, for weddings and Mount Stewart flowers in particular. Um, they have a fishmonger's, which has been there forever. Um, the bike shed. There is also a bike hire place, um, which I think we've just passed. They have a semi chem. They have a hair salon and beauticians. And they also have a sun, one sunbed on the island. Breakins, which is a licensed brasserie, never ate in it, but it's been there forever. Um, the Islander Bar, they've got quite a lot of pubs on the island. Max Bar is our was our go-to bar. Um, the the West End Chip Shop was our chip shop of choice. Um, and the co-op, this is the biggest co-op on the island so this is like the biggest supermarket and it's at the top of the main street so that's the main street basically one way up to here and then down the side they have a horologist horologist yeah and all I think about when I think of horologist is Del boy, uh, that's the only thing I ever think about. Time on our hands, and yeah, an accountant's. They have a Syrian barber. There used to be a Syrian takeaway shop here. They've also got a Syrian like, uh, like Turkish. Like the Turkish takeaway shop around the corner. Um, obviously, they've got the Turkish bakery and things like that. So you will see a lot of Turkish businesses, and that's because when the Syrians fled Syria, um, Rossi opened their doors, and the Syrians 
came over to Rossi and they were welcomed with open arms and they set up businesses here and have since thrived on the island. So they have done very, very well over here for themselves. Um, so it's been great to see them do so well here. So that's the main street. Um, other pubs on the island that are still going very well are the Grape Bar. My mum and dad used to drink in the Grape Bar a long, long time ago and that's still going very strong and that's on the main street just here. Um, Max Bar, as we said, um, the Taverna, which is in Guildford Court. You've got the Black Bull, you've got the Taverna, so that's the Grapes Bar there. Um, what other pubs is there? God, there's so many. Um, we don't use them. Down the Water is the bike shop here. This is the other shop I wanted to show you, which is Callum's Cabin Charity Shop. So you had Callum's Cabin Shop earlier. This is the charity shop for Callum's Cabin. Um, so they've got quite a few shops on the island. And this beauty is the Isle of Butte Discovery Centre. Now this is the fountain of all knowledge on the island. And this is where you find out where all your bus timetables are. You find out where your ferry timetables are. This is where you find out everything you ever wanted to know about Rossi. So in here is basically the hub of everything. So in here, it basically tells you, there you go, what's on, places to stay, things to do, things to see. It's got free Wi-Fi. It gives you all your tickets, gifts, visit Scotland, etc, etc and it's also got a cinema so there's a very very small cinema at the back of here and when we got here we got here on friday and on thursday literally they stopped showing at elvis so me and they were absolutely devastated um but um it is minions um for this week which is great obviously for the kids um, so, um, Saturday, Sunday, there is a 2.30 and a 7.30 on the Saturday and then Sunday it was a 2.30 showing, um, which is great because it starts to rain here. It's open every single day between half nine and half past five. Um, and in there, I don't know if I'm allowed to basically show you but it has videos going back as far as day dot basically of if I can video it I'll video it but basically it shows you what Rossi was like away at the very very start now I know what Rossi was like away at the very very start because my mum told me what Rossi was like at the very very start now, as you can see, as we're walking up here, it's empty. My mum showed me pictures of Rossi in the 60s. And there would have been at least 50 people walking on this pavement at this time, on a Sunday morning, just walking, like, into the city centre or away from the city centre to walk around to Port Bannatyne. There were trams on this road in the 60s. It was heaving. It's empty now and it's it's just a different world now to what it was. And it's such a shame because it's such an absolute stunning place. My dad could sit in the Discovery Centre all day and watch these videos, so could Craig. And the boys even love just sitting watching all the old footage of um, what it was like back in the day. It's got pictures, it's got the history of the Zavaroni family, it's got 
a tiny cinema, it's got it's just got everything you could ever want to know about the Isle of Butte and it's all free, it's great, it's just it's just a, it's just a lovely place to get to know what, what Butte was like basically um, so if I can show you that later I, I would really like to I'll, I'll go in and ask permission to see if I can um, but I'm just walking back to my family that have all deserted me again um, but it's brightening up here which is great <laughs> so on Rossi Island it's mainly made up of B&Bs and self-catering apartments there is a um, caravan park on the island but this is the Glenburn Hotel it's the biggest hotel on the island and it is 126 rooms and recently it has been resold again to bespoke hotels it was bought um, a few years ago by a Malaysian company just before Covid from what I can remember um, and they tried to make a go of it but it didn't quite work out for them so it was bought by Bespoke Hotels before it went into administration and it basically saved the island um, I think which is great obviously so it is going to be closed over the winter it's going to be fully refurbished and it's going to open in summer 2023 so we're looking forward to that opening that might be an option for us for next year and we are just walking up to our hotel which is the Bayview now I think I've said before we've been coming here for as long as we can remember my mum and dad came here before um, Irene and Andrew had it they were coming here when Irene and Andrew's mum and dad had it um, so they've been they've had it for 27 years so I've been coming here since Neve um, I was pregnant with Neve so they've seen Neve grow up and they've obviously seen the twins grow up this is the tree where we got our wedding pictures taken three years ago and the Bayview is two houses converted into one bed and breakfast and Irene is obviously hoping for an absolute scorcher she's got the parasols out <sighs> I've just walked back to get the pram So this is Ascog Bay, so it's just a, what would you say, Craig, 10 minutes from the Bayview? It's been close. Um, drive round, so I would say it takes a, a good half an hour's walk ah. round. Uh, we have ridden on a bicycle round here before, that wasn't pleasant, um, but... Um, up there is Chandler's Hotel. I don't know if it's called Chandler's anymore, but that um, big hotel up there is another big hotel on the island, but it's quite far away from the, from the main town. Um, there's a guy out there canoeing. That's ba uh, uh, that should be quite a nice canoe. I know that jellyfish is shaped like a flower. Um, Bracket. It's not a... Um, sandy sandy beach it's a mixture between sand and and rocks it's actually quite a good skimmer beach this one um 
there's a lot of nice wee coves there, so I can understand why people want to canoe. Um, there's a turret just there. Um, that's a bit demolished. Um, nice wee. Phone box there. Very small bay, but these houses here are absolutely stunning. Um, that one in particular is uh, my favourite. If it ever goes up for sale and I've got the money, <laughs> um, that would definitely be one I would buy. Um, this is actually the road to Mount Stewart, so if you continue to follow this road round, round that bend, Strawberry. Um, <clears throat> and then you take a right, that would take you on the road to Mount Stewart. But usually when the tide's out, that um, is a nice wee bit as well, to just skim stones and stuff. But it's dead peaceful. And this is the exact point where the, the boats, you can actually see the boats cross over, which is pretty cool. But this is Ascog Bay.